Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create your own flag and banner brushes in Illustrator. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's have a look and see what it is that we're going to achieve. We're going to see first of all how to create a brush that looks like this and it's going to paint with all the colors joining at one end and being split apart at the other. And you could use it, for example, to create a snail-like scroll like this one here. You're also going to see how to create this brush which paints as a single brush stroke but it has three tails. And then we're going to look at banner brushes and we're going to create this as a banner brush and also a banner brush that would paint like this. So now you've seen what it is that we're trying to achieve. Let's get started. To see how we're going to create these brushes, I'm going to start in Illustrator with a triangle and to draw that I'm going to use the Polygon tool. I'm going to turn off the stroke and I'm just going to fill the shape with my colour. And I'm going to use this colour here. So I'm just going to click once on my artboard because I need to be able to control the number of sides here. And I'm going to press 3 because I want a three-sided triangle and just click OK. And now I'm going to take this shape and I'm going to hold Alt as I drag away a second copy. I'm going to fill that with a different colour. And then Alt drag and fill this with a third colour. And now that I've got my three shapes, I can just create a brush from these. And this is going to make the first of my flag brushes. I'm going to choose Window and then Brushes. I'm going to drag and drop these brushes just into the Brushes panel anywhere. And I want to create an art brush and click OK. Now what I need to be careful of is to make sure that my brush is going to paint in the right direction. So I want to make sure that it's going to paint in this direction so I get the long tails on my brush. Now if I want to be able to recolor them, I would choose tints and shades, but I'm just going to leave them colored as they are. And I'm going to select Stretch to Fit Stroke Length and then click OK. And now we can move these brushes or these triangles aside and let's see how our brush will paint. Now I'm going to click on the pen tool and I'm just going to drag out a line for my brush. And I'm going to locate the stroke here and I'm going to click on the brush itself. And my brush is drawn from the starting point to the finishing point. Now if I want my brush to draw the other way, all I need to do is to deselect the pen tool because I don't want to keep drawing and now reselect the pen tool and just click on my starting point. And what that does is it reverses the brush line so I'm still keeping my same curve but my brush is going in a different direction. And so there's a way of creating a flag brush that has three separate tails to the brush. Let's just move that out of the way and let's go back and get our three triangles. And let's just move them back into the work area because what I want to do this time is to show you the second brush that we're going to create. And this is a brush that has three colors running through it. To do this, I'm going to click on the Direct Selection tool. I'm just going to drag over the very tips of these three triangles because that selects these three points. I'm going to choose Object, Path, Average. And I'm going to select both and click OK. And what this does is it just makes all three of these points the exact same location. And so we get this sort of triangle shape brush. And again, I'm going to take the Selection tool, select over my shape and drag and drop it into my Brushes palette. And again, I want an art brush. Again, I want it to paint in this direction. Well, up or down, it wouldn't matter. And I want it to stretch to fit the stroke length and click OK. Now I can move the shape out of the way because we're interested in the brush itself. This time I'm going to click on the Paintbrush tool and I'm going to click on my brush and it's this one here. And now as I draw my shape, I'm drawing the brush stroke. And this is a different type of brush. Now if the stroke is too big, then you can come in here and decrease the point size because the narrower the stroke, the narrower the brush appearance is on that stroke. 
You can also adjust it here by clicking on the shape to select it and choose options of selected object. And we can decrease its size here. And then I'll just click OK. And we've done that and all we've done is affected this shape. We haven't affected the other shape. Now this brush is going to change as we work with that shape. For example, if I choose the Smooth tool to try and smooth out the bumps in this line, as I smooth out the bumps, the brush stroke is of course going to change to rework itself along the shape that I've created. Now before we finish, let's have a look at creating a bunting brush because things are a little bit different for our bunting brush. I'm again going to use a triangle as a starting shape, so I'm just going to click here to create a triangle. I'm going to fill it with the color I want to use and I'm just going to choose the selection tool. This time I'm going to rotate it because I want it to look like a bunting piece or a little triangle of bunting before I start. So I'm just going to make that my first piece of bunting. I'm going to alt drag away the second piece and I'm going to recolor it. But I don't want strokes on any of these. So I'm going to alt drag away another piece and recolor it. I'm just creating some pastel color bunting. So I'm just going to make about five pieces in this piece of bunting. Now I'm going to show you the problem and how we're going to solve this. So I'm just going to select this, well just select these pieces anyway, and drag and drop them in here. And I'm going to make an art brush from these. And just click OK. And I want it to paint along the brush and I want it to stretch to fit the stroke length. So I'm just going to click OK. And let's just move it down here for a minute. And I want to create a line, so I'm just going to target the pen tool and I'm going to create a wavy line for my bunting to be placed on. And I want it to be about the same length as my bunting because I'm only going to get one repeat here. Now I'm going to switch my fill color and my stroke color and let's just go and apply the art brush to this stroke. Well, here's the problem. You can see that the bunting is running along the line either side of it. And so if I want to, for example, add another stroke to this line and have a line across the top of the bunting, it's not going to work. Let's just go to the appearance panel. Let's go and add another stroke to this line. And for example, I want this stroke to be a darker color and I want it to be a few points in width because I want it to run across the top of the bunting, then it's not working. So let's just grab that and delete it. And let's go back to our bunting down here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reflect this. So I'm going to choose Object, Transform, Reflect. And I'm going to reflect it over the horizontal here and I want to make a duplicate. So I'm going to click Preview and I'm going to click Copy. So that's given me two lots of bunting. And now I'm just going to shift up arrow and line this bunting up exactly across the top of the bottom bunting. So I've got like diamonds now instead of just triangles. So I'm going to select all these five triangles and I'm going to set them to no fill, no stroke. So they're essentially nothing, but there are something. So I'm going to select over all of these. So I've got the five pieces of bunting and the five triangles that are exactly the same size but not showing at all. And now I'm going to drag and drop this into the brushes panel. I'm going to create my art brush from it. Exactly the same settings and click OK. Let's move it out of the way. And now let's go and create our line. Let's go and get our stroke and let's fill it with our new bunting. Well, this time the bunting is appearing along the line and it means that if I add another stroke to my line so I can get a line across the top here and add some weight to it, I'm going to get bunting with an attachment. So I'm able to be a little bit more creative with my single line. I don't have to duplicate, I don't have to make sure they all travel together because this is all on one line. The stroke that is the bunting and also the stroke that is this top piece here. 
Now if I wanted to make bunting that would stretch along a longer line, I would need to create a pattern brush. So let's just tuck this one out of the way and let's go back to this shape down here. I'm going to select all of these pieces again and I'm going to drop them again into the brushes panel but instead of creating an art brush, I'm going to create a pattern brush because the pattern brush is going to stretch along a really, really big line. So I'm just happy with it being this stretch to fit and I'm just going to click OK. That's pretty much all I need to do. And again, let's move this out of the way. And now let's create a longer piece of line for our bunting to run along. I'm going to go to my stroke and this time I'm going to pick up my pattern brush. And if I adjust the size of this by clicking here in the options of selected object, I can decrease the size. I'm going to get lots and lots of repeats of my bunting along my stroke. Now there is an issue and we're not going to deal with that in this particular video, but you can see that the bunting is becoming distorted and it will distort along the line because that's the way that brushes work in Illustrator. But if you want to be able to create triangular bunting all along here and not have it distorted, then we're going to have to deal with that in an upcoming video because that's a totally different technique. Just before I finish, let's add another stroke to this line so that we can add a topper for the bunting. I want something that the bunting is hanging on. So let's make it pink this time. Let's just increase the stroke so that the bunting is actually attached to a something. So there you have the ability to create all sorts of handy brushes in Illustrator. They're just created from triangles. You've got a bunting art brush, you've got a bunting pattern brush, you've got a flag brush and then this sort of multicolored brush as well. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more of my video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.